guys, time again for another Willie's Ramblings and Pickup video. Uh, it's been a while since I made one of these pickup videos. I have a lot of stuff I picked, over, I picked up over the past few weeks. Visit a lot of really cool game stores. Uh, went down to Dallas, Texas twice in the past month. Visit a cool store called Game Over Video Games down in Arlington, Texas. And then I visit another store that was up in Fort Worth. Uh, called uh, Founded Electronics. Really cool store. Uh, found some neat stuff there while I was uh, visiting town. Had a buddy come over from Korea, my, my pal uh, Indy Soul, who does the Greatest American Hero podcast and Vetrix Radio and VR Enclave. Uh, he came over. Uh, he's in the States uh, right now doing some stuff, so he decided to come out and visit me for a couple days or so. We did a lot of retro game hunting. Of course, we went and visited... Uh, an arcade so we can play some Star Wars Battle Pod. I love Star Wars Battle Pod. That is a freaking awesome game. Uh, we also ran around to some different flea markets and we did some other retro game hunting at some other stores I like to hit every once in a while. He did find himself a complete in box Super Nintendo set. Really awesome find. Uh, I was going to pick it up but he was saying Oh, man, I'd like to get that. So I, I backed away. <laughs> he can have it. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have snagged it. Really good price on it. So uh, that's pretty much uh, it. Uh, let's get to some of the pickups here. All right. We'll start off with the really coolest pickup, which wasn't a pickup. What did I do with it? It was actually a buddy from Korea, Indie Soul, brought this over for me. He brought me a Game Boy Light in the box. Awesome! Uh, I've been wanting one of these for quite a while to add to my Game Boy collection. I've been trying to collect one uh, of each type of Game Boy that was made. And this thing is freaking awesome. It looks just like a regular Game Boy, except it has an Indigo pack light. Awesome! So now I can play Game Boy games in the dark. How much? How many times did we wish, when we were younger, playing these crazy Game Boys in the backseat of the car, driving at night with our parents, and you couldn't see the things? Wait for a streetlight. Oh, streetlight, streetlight. Oh, there we go. Play, 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 play. Oh, streetlight, streetlight, streetlight. Oh, there, play, 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 play. Now you can with Indiglo technology. Awesome. Only available in Japan, though, for some reason. So I'm really happy to add this to my uh, Game Boy collection. A big thanks to uh, my pal Indie Soul for bringing this to me. Really appreciate adding this to my collection. Let's see, what else? Oh, I picked myself up another Vectrix controller down there at Game Over Video Games in uh, Arlington, Texas. Uh, they were selling these for $70 a piece. It's not too bad. Uh, they have one more left down there. I didn't buy both of them. I just bought one extra one. Uh, I wanted to have two controllers so me and my pal could play some Vectrix while he was in town uh, to do some Vectrix radio recordings. But it's actually in a really good shape. Works perfectly fine. So I'm kind of happy to have another controller laying around for my Vectrix. Also picked up a spare Atari 5200 controller. I uh, found this at Second and Charles. That's a bookstore slash record store slash used game store. Has a lot of different stuff in there. Uh, this was like three bucks. And I tested it. It works perfectly fine too. Even though I'm going to rebuild it with the, the gold flex circuit upgrade and also the gold contact tips that you can get from Best Electronics. So I'll upgrade this here pretty soon so I have two upgraded controllers for my 5200. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Also, Second and Charles, they had a bunch of ColecoVision games for a buck a piece. Can you see that? A dollar a piece. Awesome. I picked up another Zaxxon. Picked up another Star Trek. Buck. Another Smurf. Buck. Space Fury. Buck. See? Buck. Awesome. Now I've already got I've already got got these games, but I've also got a multi cart. I could pass those up for being a dollar a piece. I'll probably put those in the next uh, Arcade USA retro junk box that I route around that I'll be routing around. So I'm trying to collect stuff for that next junk box I want to do. Also at Second and Charles, they had some 5200 games. 
for two dollars a piece awesome so i picked up a star trek i've already got it but hey retro jump box picked up a space shuttle Whoop. of course i i've got this game but i need to find the manual for it and print it off and the overlay because i got a feeling it's going to be a pretty complicated game to play and of course i picked up river raid for two dollars awesome great game on the 5200 retro junk box fodder material also while i was out and about i picked up this really cool micro mario kart race car it's infrared control it's a little wario guy and his little uh, go-kart right there thing is pretty neat man uh it has a turbo button on it to uh, give him a burst of speed it comes with another set of wheels that you can put on there to make them pop wheelies or you put on a pair of slicks which allows them to slide all over the place like like you see back here in the back. He does donuts and stuff. I think really cool to make like a little Super Mario track with, uh, you know, guardrails so they can never run off the track and get a few of these and just race around on it. I think it'd be kind of fun. So I'm thinking about collecting some of the other ones that they made. Uh, they made like a... Uh, of course, they made Mario, they made Yoshi, Luigi, and they got a Bowser. So that'd be kind of cool. Also comes with a neat little uh, banana peel and a mush and a mushroom in a turtle shell, right there. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. Also picked up a Formula for, for, a Formula Three auto race game. It's just an LCD game, but I've never seen one of these cheapo LCD games come in a neat little box package like this before. So I couldn't pass it up. I had to pick it up. I uh, found this at uh, Found Electronics out there in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. You can see it's never really been used. So it has the battery. Right there's the game. Has the instructions still with it. This is uh, going into the retro jump box I'll be doing here pretty soon. So I thought that was a cool little pickup to put in there. Close that up. Now the next thing I got is a really cool pickup. Got a hold of a boxed microvision. Even comes with the uh, all the original paperwork. It has like a little cardboard card that tells you which way to put the batteries in and stuff like that. Uh, my buddy Indy Soul saw this. Uh, we was at a book at a comic book store, and we were looking around for games. I was up at the counter going to check out. He walks up with this going, uh, dude, uh, did you miss something? I had no idea this was even in the store. So I'm really happy that he brought this to my attention because I've been trying to find a replacement one uh, for the one that I had that the screen went on. So that's cool. This one has a really good screen on it, so I'm really happy about that. And, of course, I got some games with it. Uh, the first one that came with the system was a sea duel Ooh. complete in the box with the instructions and then my pal uh, Scott from Retro Gaming Roundup also sent me a couple games he sent me a Connect 4 for it and he sent me a baseball for it yes green background you're seeing through it awesome huh so pretty cool to add all that to my expanding microvision collection uh, Scott also sent me some cool candy he brought home from uh, Europe. He brought home these little cafe, no, coffee, pocket coffee. That's what it's called. See? Pocket. Whoa, let me take one out of here. Yeah. Pocket coffee. Carry po coffee in your pocket. I've not tried one of these yet, so I'm going to try one right now. Get it unwrapped. Do to do. Nice, nice chocolatey looking thing there, like dark chocolate. Oh shit, it's got coffee in it. Oh! Oh man, yeah. That's coffee. Whoa! Oh, that's bitter. But strangely addicting. Oh! Wow! Oh! Ooh, give me a cold chill. Awesome. Oh. All right. Moving on. Okay. Next thing I picked up was a 
Star Wars The Clone Wars Didge. A little educational device here. Uh, it was only five bucks. Second and Charles. Takes these little cartridges. They look kind of like uh, Game Boy Advance cartridges almost. I don't have one for this. I actually ordered a couple so I can try it out. It does have a built-in game called Jetpack Jet Mania or something like that. It's actually not too bad of a game. It's actually kind of fun. A little bit slow paced because it's for a kid, but it's pretty neat. Really great screen on this little thing. So I'm going to try to get a couple more of the cartridges for it and uh, maybe do a little review video on it or something like that in the near future. Now the next thing I'll be reviewing here pretty soon on the channel is i uh, got another one of these little mini arcades. This one is the Sound... The Sound... Sound Logic XT 230 built-in games. So I'm gonna uh, do a review of this pretty soon. I did another one, a Dream the Dream, Dream Gear Arcade, which I wasn't fully impressed with. All the reason why I want to get this one because it has Galaga on it. It's not Galaga per se. They call it something different. So you can see in the graphics back here, uh, it's Galaga, but they've changed the little uh, spaceships and stuff to different different looking doohickeys and the sounds are pretty much the same so i think it's the nes version of Galaga is what i think it is there's some other great arcade games on here too there's mappies on here popeyes on here qbert's on here some other ones so i'll be doing a review of this thing uh, fairly soon next up i added to my n64 collection i picked up arcade's greatest hits the midway collection number one and it was $8. It's probably a little high, but I like collecting the arcade game cartridges for my different systems. So this one has Defender, Robotron, Sinistar, I hunger. I don't have to eat that pocket coffee, I don't. Joust, Tapper, Root Beer Tapper, and Spy Hunter. I don't know if they've released the Volume 2 or not. I need to do some research on that. But I've got the Namco collection. I've got the Midway collection now. So I'm pretty happy to have that to my N64 collection. I don't know why I'm collecting cartridges for my N64. I'll just get a multi-cart like my other stuff and save me some room. Uh, those three 5200 cartridges you saw are pretty much the only ones I have except for a box Star Raiders and Tempest. Because I'm trying to... I don't have so much... I don't have much room out here. Next thing I picked up for my Sega 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 mm, Sega Genesis is Gunship. Mm. It says for the Mega Drive, helicopter game. Uh, looking at the back of the box, I guess there's some side-scrolling levels in this as well. I never made it to those. Uh, I pretty much just got to 3D view, looking out of the cockpit, shooting stuff. But suppose they have. 3D side-scrolling levels, too. I don't know what I think about this, about this game. Uh, I don't think it's all that great. It's made by U.S. Gold. That's, that's the, the first warning I should have had when I picked it up. But it was 7 bucks. You know, I'll play it some more. If I don't like it, it's going to the retro jump box. Be gone! Also, I picked up some more pinball games for my PlayStation, PlayStation 1. Uh, a lot of you may know that I like virtual pinball games. So when I see one, I'll usually pick it up. Like if it's more like the PlayStation or, uh, I don't know if they made one for the N64, and I'll need to check into that. Or the NES. If it's a virtual pinball game, I'll usually pick it up. So I added three more to my collection. The first one is Patriot Pinball. Now it has two different tables on here. We have Road Trip and, and Coast to Coast. No. Road Trip, Coast to Coast, and American America on Duty are the two tables. Not too bad of a pinball game. The table's a little, little hard to see. Uh, they put that digital readout thing over part of the play field so the ball disappears behind it every once in a while. But it's not too bad of a game, you know. I, it's okay. It's it's pretty good. The next one I picked up was Time Shock. Whoa, reflection. Time Shock. Now, this was made by Empire. 
called the Pro Pinball Series. It's just one table, basically. And... I don't like this one too much. I mean, it, it, it could have been better. It could have been better. It, it's okay for a pinball game, but just one table on an entire CD? No. No, there should be multiple tables on those crazy things. And the last one I picked up just on a whim. It's pinball, but it, it's uh, Power Ranger Zeo Full Battle Pinball. Full Tilt Battle Pinball. Now, what's cool about this, if you're familiar with the game, uh, oh, what is that game? It's a Pinball 2000 game. It's got these alien critters that you can shoot with a pinball and launch cows at flying saucers and things like that. But I can't remember the name of the game. This is similar. There's critters that run around on the play field that you can hit with your pinball. And you can unlock the big monster creature for the table and battle him. And then once you do that, you advance to a whole new table. And you also have different countries you go to, so the tables vary quite a bit. This is actually a pretty fun game. The physics aren't too bad. Uh, I'm not really into Power Rangers at all, but I really like pinball, so I like the pinball elements of this game. Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, the Pac-Man pinball game that I like so well. Uh, that has all the different you know, Pac-Man themed stuff. So, if you're in, in virtual pinball, and you can tolerate the Power Rangers, this is one you may want to look into. It's actually quite a bit of fun. There's a lot going on in this one. Then for my PlayStation 2, I picked up the sequel to Devil Dice called Bombastic. It's basically the same game as Devil Dice on the PlayStation 1. Except this time, it gives you some more features. You... You have uh, more better animations, uh, better graphics, because it's on PlayStation 2. So far, as far as I've gotten, it's just been the uh, introductory level, where it shows you how to play the game and everything. Uh, I need to spend some more time with this game to see how much I'm going to like it. And then for my Atari 5200, I picked up a complete in-box Space Dungeon. Now this is a really awesome twin stick shooter on the Atari 5200. Actually came with a special little holder here that you need. Right here. That you would clip two joysticks into to keep them in one place. A little rubber pad keep them from sliding. Put your joysticks on there and just like Robotron. Awesome. Really fun game. It reminds me a lot of Robotron, but you're exploring a, a space dungeon. So you got things you pick up. You got multiple enemies you got to fight. Uh, I'm very impressed with this game. I, I'm really going to enjoy this one. I love twin stick shooters. I wonder if I, wonder if I do that with Robotron. I wonder if Robotron's a twin stick. I never did check into that. That would be awesome, man, because that would work for Robotron, too, if it's a twin stick shooter. So... I think that is all the stuff. Yes, that's everything. All right. So anyway, until next time, keep on gaming and thanks for watching.